Chapter 49, Nursing Care of Patients with Cerebral Vascular Disorders, page 1053 in your text. Review your learning outcomes. Make sure you do your key terms for this chapter. This is the third out of the fourth neuro review chapters in um, week 16. Okay, um, TIA, a transient ischemic attack. Um, this is uh, a stroke, it's a, a variation of a stroke, temporary impairment of cerebral circulation. It deprives the brain of glucose and oxygen, and um, the symptoms can resolve. 15% of strokes preceded by a TIA are preceded by a TIA, so um, a more severe stroke usually will follow. Um, it's just a form, it's like a mini stroke also called uh, cerebral vascular accident, or CVA. Um, it's an inadequate blood flow to the brain, um, an infarction of brain tissue, some, but similar to a heart attack. It's just involving your brain instead of your heart. Um, this will be permanent damage if not reversed, and then neurological deficits are a wide variation of what can you can be left with. So, but it can be slurred speech, um, it can be um, complete uh, paralysis on one side. It's just a big, it varies. So here, this is what we're looking at, the area of the brain that's deprived of blood, right? So it's if somebody stepped on a garden hose and cut off the flow of blood, which our brain needs blood, we know that. Um, that delivers oxygen, that's much needed. And um, it creates a, there's an embolism, and um, that blood is unable to pass. So you have a clot, and that's what we'll go into medic pharmacological. Um, you guys have treated, given a lot of, uh, like, Lovenox injections um, to help prevent, uh, not just, that that is more for uh, a DBT, but this is similar. This is a blood clot, right? Okay, so anticoagulant therapy um, is for this. Deficient blood supply um, or hemorrhagic. So it can be ischemic or hemorrhagic. And um, modifiable. It can be um, what they're talking about here is that we can modify hypertension. How do we do that? Well, if you are someone who has like say you're a uh, 300 pound six foot four man with um, 400 pounds like or, or more or you know like you're very heavy overweight um, you are not exercising you are a smoker um, you drink alcohol regularly these types of they have a highly stressful job um, risk factors right so we can modify these you can bring your um, hypertension down by increasing a healthier lifestyle. So diet, um, lifestyle as such as smoking, drugs, alcohol, um, not being a part of your daily activities, um, eating uh, or having a well-balanced maybe a life that is not stressful, knowing when to pull back. So these are things that we can have ability to modify. What you cannot modify is your age, your gender, your heredit what you get hereditarily from your genetics, from your family, from your mother, father. Um, if you had a prior stroke or heart attack, you can't change that. That's already happened, right? So um, on the left, you want to change what you can. Okay, here is, um, we have the National Stroke Association, like the Heart Association, right? Um, on page 1055, um, there's also a list of um, the modifiable risk factors on box 49.1. Um, look over and review those. Um, but the stroke risk scorecard is what we're focusing on now. And these are things that, um, it's like a checkbox. It makes it very simple. And am I at high risk? Am I in caution? Red, yellow is caution, so like a stoplight. Or green, go. Um, I am low risk. I have a six to eight. So that means that I'm doing well to control 
the things I can modify and um, I don't have a biggest chance of having a stroke as someone who would be red in the red category, okay? Um, sudden numbness or weakness, sudden confusion, sudden change in vision, sudden tro trouble walking with or having dizziness or a severe headache. You see, these are all sudden onset. It happens all of a sudden, so you can be anywhere, and you see generally um, a person will say they maybe just don't feel right, or you notice that they're, uh, they're dropping something, and they, it happens all of a sudden. So um, it's an absolute emergency situation. 911 should be um, called and emergency medical services dispatched to get this person immediately because time is, you can have effective change. Uh, FAST is your acronym here, face, arms, speech, and time. Call 911. So um, what does that mean? You have to um, be able to uh, make a assessment um, if they are um, able to, there is their face, so they can have, like, if they smile, their um, one side of their face can be drooping. Um, they might, <clears throat> um, or they will have trouble with their vision. Um, their arms, do they have any numbness, their speech? Um, they're not going to be able to talk correctly. And um, time is of the essence, yes. Um, so... Depending on where in the brain, obviously we looked at the anatomy of the brain. You see, you know what the different lobes are, what they are, how they are affected. They all have different areas, our vision, our coordination, our emotion, all those are different things. So sensory loss, dysphagia, mental status, visual and speech dis disturbances. <clears throat> okay, um, if you have a left side infarct, it will affect the right side of your body. If you have a right-sided infarct, it will affect the left side of your body. Okay? So that is the diagram for you there. Um, they give you uh, some visual disturbances that you will experience, possibly, through the eyes of someone that's had a stroke. Um, we can do some testing here to find out where the stroke is, how severe it was. Um, they'll need to be on thrombolytic therapy, airway management, control of hypertension, fever, and glucose, and yes, seizure, pre seizure prevention, sorry. Thrombolytic therapy, this is going to help dissolve a clot. Um, it's three to four and a half hour time uh, that you have a period to get this this clot um, dissolved. And so time lost is brain lost, meaning you can have no oxygen to the brain. Your brain, your body is going to suffer, right, what you are left with. So it's imperative, emergency. This is absolute high priority triage. Um, Post-mergent interventions treat causes of the stroke. So the clot. Um, physical, occipital, um, I'm sorry, occupational, speech therapy. So um, these are the types that they can correct. They can do amazing things with occupational, um, physical, and speech therapy. They can People have to relearn how to eat. They have to relearn how to talk, um, how to get in and out of a car, in and out of their home, out of their shower, how to, you know, get dressed, all of those things. They'll be on antiplatelet or anticoagulant. Um, they're on pharmaceutical um, therapy for probably always. Antiarrhythmic agent, um, always maintaining a patent airway. Okay, uh, prevention. Control of their weight, hypertension, cholesterol. Smoking cessation. Aspirin or Coumadin. Early recognition and treatment is imperative. Again, um, we can do a carotid endarectomy under the category of treatment uh, from the doctor. Balloon angioplasties with stents. There's all different types of surgical interventions and procedures that the um, neurosurgeon will perform. What are the long-term effects? Uh, we talked about these a little. Impaired motor 
function um, impaired cessation. They might not have feeling um, the same ever again. Um, dysphagia, aphasia, um, pseudodobular effect, uh, impaired judgment, or unilateral neglect. This is brain, um, imp you know, damage that can be caused and you leave that person with impaired um, neurological abilities. So um, cerebral aneurysm, here we see um, an aneurysm that has been found in the, it will cause weakness in the artery wall um, or a subarachnoid hemorrhage. This will, um, this is an aneurysm. Um, it will cause the uh, vein to have a malformation, head trauma. Um, these are different ways. So you can see here on um, like an angiogram, arterial venous, uh, where there is, where there are clots forming there that cause the malformation. Okay. Um, signs and symptoms we see here. <clears throat> they can have a number of these, or they can have just maybe a, like one or two. These are our tests that we will do. Um, the doctor orders and you help to um, get processed for the person. Therapeutic interventions, craniotomy, um, they will do, or, or non-surgical um, monitoring blood pressure, um, thrombose aneurysm, so they will medication. Um, that is a metal clip that they put on and actually to try to um, get rid of the clot. Uh, yes, complication, rebleeding, um, hydrocephalus, vasospasm, lots of complications. Um, someone can be having surgery and they have a stroke um, as a complication and die or be greatly impaired. Um, this is a shunt. This is an illustration of a, of a shunt. Um, Okay, um, so we are up to page um, 1064, figure 49.9, and um, here you want to um, see that there's a catheter that they have put in place. Um, it goes into the per from the peritoneal cavity um, to the brain, and um, that is underneath the skin, um, and it helps to um, relieve some of that pressure. Um, this is um, in your assessment what you will be checking for, um, what you can possibly see, and um, you want to help with weakness, per, um, if they have paralysis to one side, um, it can be all levels of severity, mild, moderate to severe. So um, they can have seizures. Um, you want to make sure that they have thickened um, liquids because they are at risk for aspiration. Here are some nursing diagnosis options for you. Continued. Okay, risk for ineffective cerebral tissue perfusion. So here um, you want to monitor their neurological status, vital signs. Um, you want to, um, their blood glucose, coagulation studies. You want to be looking at their labs. Um, keep their head above 20 to 30 degrees at all times and monitor their medication effects. There is a picture board on page 1069 to help them because like I said, they get very frustrated because they have um, a difficult time communicating often. Ineffective airway clearance. You absolutely want to make sure that um, you might have to possibly um, provide suction for them because they are not able to clear their mouth and uh, throat of saliva. Um, 
as much as they need and they can aspirate. Um, monitor for hemorrhage. Um, implement seizure precautions, yes. Always assist with transfers and ambulation to and from bathroom, um, toileting, and um, like showers, getting dressed, those types of things. Impaired physical mobility. Um, good body alignment, very important. Range of motion is extremely important. And on your, um, under your scope of practice. So um, make sure that you provide safe and as ordered range of motion exercises. Make sure their wheelchairs are, um, that they have proper footwear that are all like skid resistant and so that they don't fall down. Um, turn them every two hours if they are immobile. Imbalance nutrition. Um, you try to get them to sip water. Um, these are all things that are under your, um, yes, disturbed sensory perception, under your nursing diagnosis options, right? Protect their skin. Absolutely, skin integrity is an issue. Um, so repositioning them, helping them with their circulation, um, gentle massage, range of motion, a passive range of motion, um, monitor them for incontinence, making sure that they have, um, that they're having regular BMs, um, giving them a toileting schedule, uh, self-care deficits. Um, this is huge with people that have strokes. Um, we talked about impaired verbal communication already. There's a picture board, acute or chronic confusion. Um, yeah, if they are, it can be from short or long term, either or, um, reduce their stressors. So um, as much as possible, they might be, it can be a out of nowhere, like they were functioning, had a job, had a life, and now they are hospitalized. They are left impaired. They have all these big changes and they need a lot of help with that, as, as do their family and caregivers. Um, risk for falls. Um, especially if someone's been independent, right? We see people live alone, they're independent, and then they uh, immediately from one day to the next, all that's gone. No driving, no work, no, like, it's completely gone. <clears throat> okay. Educate, educate, educate. Um, be very patient. Let them know. Meet them where they're at. Uh, find out as much as you can so that you can meet them where they're at. Um, this is a very big caregiving role strain. If they're a couple and they want maybe one was the caregiver and that's the one that is now impaired, it's going to be a huge shock to their system um, and their roles as a couple. So how, be as supportive to the caregiver as you are to the patient. Here are some review questions for you. That was select all. We have one more chapter after this, and we'll be done with the neural review.